the point of the matter is, I heard people calling, oh, um, the Prime Minister's been half asleep, half asleep most of the month, and uh, Chris Sickley, here's the one thing today, and he says, I'm there, you were uh, proven, you got, you, you, you got, and all of that rubbish. Just say, oh, things in Barbados are so bad. We, we are the worst off. Look, in 1991, we went down to two weeks of imports. Two weeks. We are 15. We went down to two weeks, even at our worst, without the foreign loan, which we just which we just locked in. Which, of course, you know, the opposition, everybody said, we can borrow. But now, when we borrow, they say, oh, they get it, but they get it at terms they don't like. Oh, why should the government have to produce the Article 4 consultation report? But the Article 4 consultation report is put up on the website of the IMF. Anybody could take it down. So if a bank wants the consultation report put in as one of the conditions, well, why would I object to that? And, 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 and so they say we can borrow, but we borrow it. We got it. But we went down to, to two weeks of imports. Unemployment went as high as 23%. We laid off 3,000 people, cut salaries by 8%, reduce unemployment benefits, and eliminate all of the tax deductions, bar a few out of the tax code. This government has not done this. In fact, I, as I said in my presentation, with the exception of the, 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 many, the many recession we had in 2001 after 9-11, all the other recessions that we've had in this country have been worse than this. The 1971, 72, 73 period, the oil crisis, 81, 82, when the great Tom Adams, that David, that Mr. Ellis liked so much, <clears throat> used to have all those battles with that I used to enjoy them. He laid off people, went to the IMF, did all of those things too. Sandy, Mr. Sandiford, in 91, had a worse domestic recession to deal with. We have had the worst international recession in a hundred years. And you want to tell me you, you can't give any value at all to the capacity of the government to have maintained this economy and keep it afloat in the worst possible recession that the world has ever seen, in which values were cut, investment was cut, tourists were cut, spending was cut, international business, which David and colleagues is responsible for 60% of tax revenues in terms of, 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 of corporate, from corporate profits. So when you get that sector being hammered in a global recession, when you get tourism being hammered in a global recession, are you going to tell me with all of the debt that we've had to be piled on and debt and, and had to come in and deal with, you know, you all don't talk about these things, you know? Oh, yeah, you get the microphone, because we can have an engagement on that Just issue. Just quickly, the only point, though, Minister, yeah, 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 is that yeah, yeah, in the context yeah, 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 of this me. discussion, the government spending has also been heavily criticized against the backdrop yes. of knowing all that was happening. For prior to the elections, we saw a situation where there were persistent criticisms about how the government was spending. And yes. you, as Minister of Finance, must take the, the responsibility for having not reined it in. David, I take the responsibility. I, I don't run from responsibility. But you have to understand that we were, we were, everybody was hoping, and, and these are all the international experts that the turnaround in the global economy would have been strong enough to have helped our revenues to rise to the level where we can make the expenditure adjustments without having okay. to retrench people. That was the policy. And there wasn't any explosion of expenditure. If you look at what we were spending in terms of goods and services and so forth, in 2012, as, in 2011 as opposed to 2012, there wasn't any great explosion. You know where the explosion came? The explosion came in debt service. Over $200 million. That is where the explosion came. And why you have to do that? Because if you're borrowing, you have to pay. And whenever we came up with a measure, don't care what it was. Oh, you're killing people. Sickle offering people. The sickle plan got me can't drink a Sprite. Everything is blame on for me. Yeah? Because people like a scapegoat. I don't mind being a scapegoat. I could be a scapegoat cat in Oregon. I don't bother me. I, I, you know, but I take responsibility for what I do. Oh, no, 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 I take responsibility for what I do. And I do not make excuses for my failures or in, inadequacies. I accept them all. But if you want to blame me, blame me for everything. Blame me for the dump, the $100 million spent on a dump at Greenland. 
I'm not a toffee paper going in there. Blame me for the $35 million spent by the BTA alone that we have to pay back that constrains the BTA's ability to market because they have to take up money and pay back alone to sail a boat halfway about the Caribbean or, or around the Caribbean half empty for World Cup. Blame me for the $153 million stadium down there where people are advised not to build it. Blame me for the $165 million on the highway, a project built without a proper contract and when we picked it up it was nothing more than a mile road. Blame me for the three hundred million dollars in gem. Blame for sickle for that. Blame me for the judicial sector, and I had to come as minister of finance and take that out of the bridge alone, pay exorbitant and horrible rates, and clean that up. Blame for sickle. All of it. If that makes people happy, blame me. I take the responsibility. But I know, I know, government don't begin in one year and in the next. It is continuous. And the things we did when money was flowing and honey was all around and did not correct those situations have come back to haunt us now that the sore has been, the plaster has been removed and the sore has been cruelly exposed. But I know I am not going to sit down as Minister of Finance as long as I am in that position, this position, and see it and not do something about it. We were talking about restructuring the economy for many years. Tell me what was restructured in Barbados. Tell me what was restructured. Absolutely nothing. One commentator, who of course twists and turns as the wind blows, often made the point, and he was correct when he made it, that you know the Barbados economy is looking pretty. Everybody was flowing. It was like a pear tree. The leaves green, 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 and the roots rotten, rotten, rotten. And those roots have now been exposed. And we have to do major surgery. And all we are asking is for little cooperation. I don't want people criticizing people who find things to criticize you for. That's part of the core, part of the core. But don't tear down the country and frighten investors. I have been there with people and telling people, oh, wait till we get in government. Don't invest in Barbados. And then come to lecture me. I support my country. I support my country. I am too determined to be defeated. I believe in Barbados and I believe that we can work together to pull ourselves out of this. It will not be painless. In fact, it may very well be painful for some people. But at the end of the day, we have to ensure that the collective body is moved together. And that is where we are at.